Hello, welcome to the Grosio Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Commission. I'll call this meeting to order and we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone's doing well today? Yeah. I'd like to see if there's any additions or deletions to the agenda as presented. Hearing none, move on. Um, as far as approval of meeting minutes, we have uh, we have meeting minutes from back in November, which was our last formal um, meeting. And uh, Aaron had sent out the uh, minutes, I believe, directly after that. I, I don't think we've heard you know, from any actual uh, um, any problems with those minutes? So, does anyone have anything else that they'd like to speak at right now? No. Better line. Motion to approve as written. Can I get support? Sure. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. It's time for open public comment. Seeing that there's no one here, we'll um, we'll close public comment. Com excuse me, public comment at this time. But if someone does come in later on, you know, we'll be happy to entertain any questions that they do have. So we'll move on to old business. And the first item we have is um, you know, our work on the fountain. Uh, for those of you at home that are interested in learning more about the fountain, the Island Roadrunners have presented uh, Groziel Township with a donation for a fountain to be placed uh, near that athletic fields on the southern end of the Grozio uh, shared use path. As such, you know, they, they were able to come up with the money for the fountain, but needed help with the actual construction costs. So this commission de decided to recommend to the board that we accept their gift, as well as find a creative way to help install the actual fountain. So we've had a few ideas floating back before, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those now. Aaron, um, I was wondering if you could briefly go over the um, the, 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 the information that via the email that we're uh, entertaining different options as mm -hmm. far as the Falcon choices. I think um, based on the survey that was sent out, uh, most people agreed on the most dependable fountain, 3800 SM model. That the blue one that we saw. It was blue in the picture, okay. but that is something we need to talk about is the color. <laughs> I don't think we agreed on the color. Um, it, it seemed like I had mentioned one color, Jane mentioned textured copper, and there were a couple votes for the blue. Um, I'm willing to sway my vote to the textured copper. So unless anyone has something else, I think those are the two that we would need to decide between. Don't interpret mine as a vote for blue. I just thought they were kind of cool, but it, it would not work <laughs> yeah. here. It wouldn't work in this community, I don't think. We'd have a... No. Mm -hmm. no. The texture covers yeah. as much as yeah. whatever <laughs> matches the existing. I, I would just interject that uh, once we've made our, suggest our suggestion, we should probably speak to the Island Roadrunners and just say, this is the one we picked. Is this the one you like to? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm just wondering, was there... Was the... Um, was the tally close? Was there uh, any runners up that we should be you know, keeping uh, yeah. still considered part of uh, um, our There choice? were a few towards the top, but I would say this was by far um, okay. the most popular one. I did receive a few votes uh, via email, so there were there was maybe one or two second choices, but the full ranking wouldn't have been there in the email votes. I did not vote for, for a choice. I um, noticed not everyone voted. Well, I didn't vote for a choice. I wanted it to be a that's, choice. That's okay. Of the, of the people who voted, mm -hmm. that I was, like the color. That was the <laughs> I think I think it should be unique, but not not stand out. Okay, you know? yeah. mm -hmm. My concern is is that, it, and if we look at future growth and, and opportunity here, and there are several other fountains installed, um, we get the hodgepodge effect. You know, there's um, I would like them to be similar at least in appearance, opposed oh. to. You know, maybe a stainless steel one, a blue one, a textured stone one. Um, you know. I'm not hung up on uniformity. You know, if you want to live in row houses, you can live in row mm -hmm. houses, but this is a unique, unique community. And 
the two we've got are different already. Uh, my, my choice has been to uh, make it tasteful, don't make it stand out, it doesn't have to be lime green, uh, you know, but uh, whatever it is, it is. Uh, but there, there goes another uh, concern too, is a bright color would indicate to people where it's at. You know, sometimes the texture one blends in. The one at Church Road seems to blend in, you don't even see it. So maybe a bright color is something we could consider for just the reason that it does stand out, people know where it's at. At least consider that. So, I mean, there's, there's an argument on so many different sides of this. Where exactly is it going to be? Somewhere at the intersection of Grow and Meridian. Somewhere in the corner, though. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'd probably be on the, on the east side of uh, Meridian, closer to the intersection of Grow. I'm not sure if our TV crew can zoom in to actually get a picture of the, this, but this is the, the model of the fountain that we're looking at, and we're discussing whether or not the the color of a color choice of blue was sufficient or if we should be moving towards some of the other options. <laughs> no, you were talking about um, if it's dark color, nobody may be able to see it. If yeah. it's bright, it's true. Mm -hmm. Not if I have yes. a dark color and maybe a trim. Something. Kind of like the fire hydrant. Yes. We got, uh, we've got that fountain down there with a bench and it's decorated up a little bit. I didn't, I didn't think it was, I think it's it's present, but not, you won't lose it. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to stick with some kind of standard formation. So I think that we'll, we've got a couple drinking fountains on Allen. We try to stay with similar models and colors just for uniformity. I think that's a good idea. Um, just like with our sign policy, we don't want mismatched signs. Uh, uniformity is gonna, you know, as if with all road signs, um, there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just a, a reminder, the, the different things that we're looking at as far as the, the options for the fountain was obviously, you know, we wanted this, the, the price to be um, within the ballpark of around $4,000, which was the uh, donation gift. We want to make sure that it is uh, uh, ADA friendly, handicap accessible. Uh, additionally, the Island Roadrunner specifically wanted a pet bull or, you know, wanted to make sure that it was pet friendly. Um, as well as some of us here were interested in ha making sure that there was a jug filler or some sort of way to fill a water bottle as opposed to having to just use the, the mouthpiece of the fountain and tilt your, your fountain, your bottle at an angle. So looking at those three things, you know, it, it kind of limited some of our choices there. So the question is how do we balance, you know, those options that we're looking at as well as trying to uh, you know, maintain some order as some other people were talking about as far as consistency with the other fountains that we already have on the island. When I said that I meant that maybe not in appearance, I mean in appearance only, not in, in functionality. This, this might be an upgrade from the other fountain offering more options. So I just, I, I just touched on the fact that I think they should look alike even though the newer ones they may not be identical. I think the newest one we're going to have is a step up from the old one because it's offering more options and um, more functionality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're talking about maybe in the future going to add more trails. We're talking maybe parkway. Maybe that's the beginning of 2000, the next era. Mm -hmm. This is sort of whatever we pick now might be more of the standard as well as the other two are outlier outliers. Yeah. The only, the only thing I'll, I'll end that conversation with is that make sure the roadrunners like it. Yes, of course. Yeah. You know, that's I think the, the water bottle, I think the. Okay. So, hey. The water comes out the top, I'm happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, would you recommend <laughs> that we, you know, show this choice as well as maybe the, um, the, the runner-up as far as... Uh, to the Island Roadrunners and see what their opinions are on that. I can send an email out later this week or early next week and see what their opinion is on that. I'd frankly just send the one. Here okay. it is. This is the color we want to go with. Do you like it? I okay. agree. You're going you're to be you know, agonizing over colors and shapes and sizes. All right. sure. and we'll put it in about Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, get year. Yeah. <laughs> let's get it done. There's just one other thought. I was reading through the brochure. And is there, you'd be one to know this, Wally. 
is there irrigation already at that corner? And I know we've had discussions in the past, in the past life, about for the people of the Beautification Commission to be able to water plantings that may or may not, or maybe in the future there, and it has options for a faucet on the there, side, there, 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 there's faucet. A, an option for a faucet on the side of that one, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. And I think that one's also a frost proof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's several. There's like a whole list of options and things like that, but I was wondering if you want, if you thought that that might be something we would want to put on it just for the sake, because I know we had that problem at Four mm -hmm. Corners. I don't know if we still do. Do we ever get water at Four Corners? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we've okay. got a plus industrialized spigot there and okay. the water and anyway. So I don't know if that's an issue here or not, but maybe we do it, do something like that there with it. Yeah. I'm sure it's probably a well, small option. We're making the tap. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, check on the price for right. adding the spigot in. The, you know, they're going to make a tap. They may as well, they may as well put a T in it. Mm -hmm. I don't think you want to have a, a water faucet with a hose connection on the fountain. Yeah, what the option was is there's a door with a lock yeah. on it. You open the door and then yeah. you can get access to it. So you can maybe you use the a square key. Someone. Yeah. So same tap then. You just would need the one. So cool. That was it. Great. Great idea. Yeah, we have to think forward too. Keep that in mind that as you mentioned, if there's plantings in that intersection that might come later because people do some beautification improvements on the, the path. That water becomes pretty important to watering these yeah. plants. So it's hard to fill that bucket off that fountain. It sure is. It's a good mm -hmm. idea. Yeah, I mean, if we're investing in this you know, fountain as well as you know the uh, the bricks that surround it, I'd be a great be a great opportunity to have some more landscaping over there. Mm -hmm. it, it's just cotton. Inevitably, that's what seems to happen. Well, that's, and, that, it's like, and that's a good thing. It's like the the bridge. The free bridge, how that turned out, we ended up, it wasn't just the road improvement, it had to be aesthetically pleasing as well. Mm -hmm. so. Great. So, you know, transitioning over to the brick selection. In the past, um, Wally had uh, done some great work for us and basically giving us an idea that we need to be selling around 140 bricks. At that would have been a minimum at 50 bucks a piece. Yeah. Uh, and that would generate about seven thousand five hundred dollars, which would. I'm telling you, the minimum to be fifty what each? Mm-hmm. Fifty okay. five zero. Um, to repay the general fund as well as you know, install the fountain and the bricks. And there's two sources that we've looked into in the past: uh, Poland engraving as well as Bricks R Us. And Rob, I believe you uh, yeah, I was, were looking at. Some I was checking uh, with a friend of mine who's a. Uh, Associated with the University of Michigan, and he did not get back with me on that. So, okay. um, did you see this? Yeah. Oh, no. of, um, of the two, when I looked at the website, they both seemed that you could set up websites for who could donate. Um, they mm -hmm. offered a lot of the same things, but the price per brick was uh, pretty different. It was sixteen fifty <coughs> per brick for the. Did you say Poland? I think I have Poland. Poland. Oh, oh, oh. And then um, it was $19 per brick for the bricks are us. So Is it 16 it versus 19? The money you get. Mm -hmm. It's like Poland engraving. Unless there's something, something else that we should be looking into. But it was free shipping. There was no minimum requirement. Mm -hmm. That's important. Is there anything else? Yeah, is there anything yeah, else? Yeah, mailing bricks is expensive. Mm -hmm. no, <laughs> but that's a, you know. When you think about it, to sixteen dollars for a brick, and we're going to sell it for fifty. You've got about a, you know, thirty-four dollar. I, I guess the question is, how big of area are we trying to fill with the bricks? I think that's the first thing because when you identify the number of bricks that you would need to fill that, well, we can work backwards and say, how many bricks do we have? This is how big it needs to be. Mm. You know what I mean? But they may be too small. I mean, they, they, they think we have the standard I'm brick done. is four by eight. So yes. if you do the math, it might just be a tiny area. Yeah, yeah, 140 100, bricks. That's yeah. exactly. I'm thinking yeah. 140 bricks, you're going to get just about those two tables worth of bricks and not much more. And yeah. That's why I'm that's thinking that you're going to want a, a bigger mm -hmm. platform for all of this. And keep, you keep selling bricks? I don't see a problem with continuing to sell bricks because once you get done with this fountain, making it as Absolutely. big as you want to, then you can go down to the next one and fix that one up, and then you can go down to the to the park and fix that one up. And, uh, pretty right. soon, you know, we've we've made a mark on the community. I like the something to consider: how many brush, how much, what style, and what design. 
You gotta think mm-hmm. third color over. You gotta think about that too. Yeah. Well, the design and the size of the design would drive the number of bricks. Yeah. And since you want to get bricks with people's names on them, you're not going to be wanting to get too fancy with your design because then you're cutting mm-hmm. bricks, and that's cost to, to install. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can't sell no, cut but, bricks for naming. No, I'm not talking about the design of the book. The design of, well, of yeah, the court. I, I, I understand that. They're all uh, straight. Oh, okay. And the edge of the bike path is most likely going to be a straight edge, too. So that would probably be indicative of a, a square design. Now these these aren't going to be pavers from these companies. They're going to be rectangular. They're going to be 4x8, mm-hmm. 8x8, eight, eight by eight, or 12x12. 12 12. Mm-hmm. That's the three choices yeah. you have. So you can get some geometry in there, but the mm-hmm. geometry is going to wind up to be rectangular. Yeah. So unfortunately, this might add to the cost, but I mean, if we figure the size of the pad you want, and then we would intersperse it with blank bricks and mm-hmm. space them out, mm-hmm. I don't know how that's going to affect the cost, though. What's a what's a blank brick go for? Just just one to match without engraving. I mean, that would be the those are the offset cost. Yeah. I think those are questions that are answered at one of them. I don't, okay. I don't remember that answer. Would that be inventory to be sent away to do it? See, we can't. Take yeah, the brick and put it in, then send it and send it back. It's no, not you're gonna cost have, effective. You have to have some extras. Mm-hmm. Well, one, of, one of those companies inside. tells you a lot about how to put the bricks in. Yeah. yeah. So they don't install them, but they, they give some good ideas. And there's a lot of people around that know how to lay brick pavers that do that. Mm-hmm. Maybe you like that project. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. Like mine. Laying brick pavers is not difficult. No. The actual hard part is prepping the ground for it. It's not going to be load bearing, you guys, so it, it, it solves a lot of the problem. <laughs> yeah, I think you know a lot of this depends on the exact location of you know, where the fountain is going, and to, to do that, I think we, we definitely need to talk to the um, Department of Public Service. And so, I, should I be talking with um, Lorinda? Yeah. Lorinda has been named interim director. Mm-hmm. I like think a wise choice. She's been with Barry for 10 years and has great continuity, you know, so she's the one that'll help you. Is there any reason we can't choose a company to start selling sooner rather than later, though, so that we at least have mm-hmm. some ready when it goes sure. in? Because we, I, ideally we would have the money before the installation, so we don't have to borrow it. You'll have, you know, you, you could have some of that money from brick sales, but you know, you can't beat the interest rate. And, uh, oh. they, they want the fountain in. The, the township board really wants that fountain in, so I wouldn't worry about that. We'll sell the bricks. Roger's going to buy 15. I'm going to buy <laughs> two. <laughs> right? Yeah. I got two at least. I mm-hmm. also thought it would be nice if all of us go in um, together and one brick, so that way we can you know, commemorate mm-hmm. our time on the commission. Here. Sure, just mm-hmm. put it, just put it down there from you know be back in there. Um, and that'd be a nice twelve by twelve, wouldn't it? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I you know, of these two choices, it sounds like you know polar engraving is the cheaper choice, and mm-hmm. that both mm-hmm. choices are equal based on what your review, Aaron. Yes, but I'm by no means. Both an of them have so a nice quality has. product. I've seen. Both of them. I reviewed both, and I, I support Polar. Yeah. Is there any reason not to go with Polar? Rob, do you think that you're going to hear back from your... Uh, I don't think there would be a cost differentiation that much one way or the other. Okay. So. Well, so as far as brick sales go, honestly, $50 a brick is a low price for a memorial brick. Most of them sell for 100 bucks. Scouting is now a hundred at the scout camps. Oh wow! And that's maybe an idea. If we start with the Kroger, maybe we can have like a bucket, and people can donate. Mm-hmm. Have a bucket ready. That's a good idea. You're very generous. Island Fest. That's where a I great think we're place for make, a table. Make mm-hmm. the most of this would be the Island Festival, and maybe like the Memorial Day parade that they have downtown. Mm-hmm. If we had a booth yeah. or something along Main Street there with some signage. I think those two things would be mm-hmm. probably our best bet to get to the bank for the buck mm-hmm. um, early into the year. 
<laughs> late, yeah. later on in the year cleaning up. Uh, I, Tim I, Rooney has you know, often uh, been very gracious and given us a page within uh, channels mm -hmm. so that yeah. way we can advertise about what's going on with mm -hmm. the commission and this might be something that we could advertise as well if we're still looking for bricks. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put that up at the Island Fest and you have a, a nice picture, you know, two foot by two foot blow a picture from Polar, which they'll supply you <coughs> showing them what some of these things look like. And, uh, like a proposal. Then you put up another sign there. That, I mean, go go to a printer, get a classy looking sign. Don't you know? We're gonna we're gonna go for a full first class all the way on it. I think, and it would be my two cents anyway. Mm -hmm. but, so will uh, we have something in the ground by then? The fountain will be in the ground by then. No. No. Okay. Nope. Don't think that'll happen by then. Okay. Got to remember, today's what February eighteenth. We got three months. Yeah. Then it ain't going to be possible. Well, I think it's possible. Really want it's possible. We'll try. At the least, we should have like an artist rendition of what the site will look like, mm -hmm. not just yes. the necessarily the bricks, but exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then yeah. maybe, maybe make it bigger, that. and then sell more. Don't put a top limit on it, and then sure. do some kind of a formula of how much you yeah, how big the patio has to be to properly spread out the bricks. The, the other idea was was instead of a, in, in addition to having brick samples, set the fountain up there, buy it, bring it in, set that's it true. up. That's true. Oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be down here. Can you can you imagine how nice it will look with your name below it? <laughs> I don't think we're going to have a problem supporting the brick sales. No, I don't either. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I jump on that. I, I used that 140 just as a conversation point, but you know, I would be surprised if we sold 500. And that would be a nice platform, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Place to park bikes off of yeah. the path. Maybe you, you can mm -hmm. buy in replacement fountains that match our new fountain for the other sites. Once Because people, <laughs> people are really, you know. They use these all the time. Sure. Let's see, let's see what happens. Yes. Yeah. This, this is a nice project. This mm -hmm. this community is looking at this committee, right? Show them what you got, guys. Show them what you got. So I'm going to make contact with uh, Island Road Runners to make sure that they are they're uh, like the fountain that we're leaning towards, as well as I'll make contact with Lorinda about the, the site specific details. But I was wondering if maybe you know, uh, two of you would be interested in you know, being part of a subgroup, and that way we can just make sure that we're moving this forward. And that way we can you know, think about the designs, or uh, you know, think a little bit more about the actual fundraising aspects. So, you, know, you don't have to be volunteers. I'll, I'll volunteer for that. Okay. So. I can't volunteer, but I'll of course help with the volunteers. Okay. I'm just. Too short on time now. My schedule is right. too full. Totally understand. Mm -hmm. So, so you got. I do like Wally's idea of purchasing the phone prior to Island Festival and have it in on display mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. signage. And if we all man the booth there with some volunteers, friends, and family to help us, I think we'll be able to sell very. <coughs> the amount we need. It makes sense too. I mean, if we get a heck of a deal on the actual loan, so. Why not have it on hand rather than waiting to buy it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is there any other questions, comments, concerns about the, the fountain okay. discussion? Confirming, we argue the blue one, the copper. Is that what we agreed on? Um, I know we agreed on the, uh, you know, the model. The model. The color. I don't yeah, think we agreed on. Yeah, the road runners let them make the decision. Okay. You're buying the fountain. Why not let them have a choice? Buy some other fountain. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they say, I remember in the past, email us whatever you want, whatever you want. Again, like mm -hmm. I think you said, go back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, so so if you're buying it, you pick the color. Here. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. so. We'll give the board, we'll, we'll weigh in on the color. You know they will. So. <laughs> mm. That's my job. I know. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I know it's a little something bit neutral. Bit. Something <laughs> matches one of the other two. Only in America, you get a free thing to have a guy who's got more stories to share. <laughs> I, mean, I know it's polarizing, but to me, you know, blue is nice because blue is water. Yeah. It's like it's it's a very you know, uh, simple. That's why I've seen a lot of blue ones, especially, but in urban areas, not uh -huh. in a, not in a rural place like here. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> um, to, to to touch on this too, I was thinking that with the um, the drinking fountain there. Um, of course, we're going to need a bike stand. 
you know that's where that's going. Mm -hmm. Sell mm -hmm. some bricks. That's yeah. that's why I say more bricks are better yeah, because sure. maybe we can fund a nice bike stand, um, so people don't just get off and throw their bikes on the ground. Yeah, amen. You know, key's a nice one. Make sure it matches. And a bunch. Yeah. Well, there's some locally made ones. A lot of the artists and guys down in Detroit are making, mm -hmm. like whatever. They'll do whatever we want mm -hmm. with a yeah, we with the welder. They go put color. it together. And I don't think there's any liability issues with one, is there? You got to ask. You know, with the uh, no, no. like playground equipment. You never know where the liability <laughs> issues <laughs> live in this world. <laughs> I'm sure they'll run it past their people and check. Yeah. Great. Let's move on to our second item with an old business, which is the. The horse mill path and maintenance project updates. While I know you, you talked about there a need to like still finish up those projects in the spring. There, there's still some need, but we're not going to be able to do anything now until the weather breaks. I've also worked with the, my other committee, and uh, as you know, they have done some work removing some brush, having a, a wood cutting event. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have two of them this year, uh, and that'll help with some of the uh, unsightliness of what was left there. Uh, get the first 20 or 30 feet into a, into the woods cleaned up a bit and the whole thing will look a lot better. But the truth is that there is a lot of wood there that is naturally fallen. You know? mm -hmm. and there's still some there that should have been taken away and we've, we've argued about it. And uh, we'll, get the, we'll get something done there in the spring. My son is working um, to come up with an Eagle Scout project. He didn't want to wait to mark the path, so he located one of the logs that were cut down from the path going in, and um, a friend of ours on the island is going to cut it, and he'll make a big wooden log bench for somewhere on the horse, horse mill path, so it'll be a recycled project. Cool. I like cool. that. He's going to handcraft it, huh? Yeah, he's going to strip it down and finish it. And well, neat. I've seen some of those where they take a half a log, a two foot, a two and a half foot diameter log. Nobody steals them. Yeah, you they're, know, they're kind of heavy. They're kind of heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Lumberjack might, but they're not running them around. So, so they do look pretty. Yeah. Uh, they give them a couple, couple hundred coats of urethane to make them last oh, it's forever. A, it's a natural, it's a nature recycle project, which sure. is an additional word for his Eagle Scout project. Yeah. Sounds cool. <clears throat> it matches the trees. It matches the wood. Yeah. The uh, since we're talking about paths, we did a yeoman's job of sharpening up our paths this last year. We did. Paths are looking good. This year we ought to do something with our bridges. The bridge over the uh, Frenchman's Creek and the bridge over the Thoroughfare Canal could certainly use a good power wash and seal again. But they're, they're starting to look dingy. They were looking bad in the fall. This weather's done nothing to make them anything but worse. Uh, there has been a, a fellow on the island that has been doing the power washing for Tim uh, on the uh, place games. And he's been putting finishes on for the place. He does a nice job. Uh, I would suggest that perhaps talk to Tim and or Lorinda. Matter of fact, let's make it end and see if they can get him back and get a decent price to power wash them mm -hmm. and then give him another <coughs> coat of preservative. That would really spruce up the rest of the pass. Mm -hmm. And you think there's anything that, a major that you want to see as a, as a group for the bike paths this year? Or is there anything that we missed or anything that... Well, there's a couple of things I'd like to talk about going back to the bike path that we just put up there. One, obviously, is the, the fixing of the things that we identified at the... Uh, they didn't, the get them, they didn't get them, Rob, but they will. I, I, mm -hmm. I get that. But the other things that I noticed was there's a lot of signage on that new bike path. I think almost too much signage, in my opinion. And I don't know, I've had several of my neighbors go, it's the same thing to me, is why did they put 20 signs on this bike path? It's a long open space, and it's really pretty, and then every 50 yards there's a big metal sign that announces that, you know, there's a curve in the bike path, or there's park lane at ends, and and I think we almost overdid it there, and I'd like to see if we could take some of that down, if it would make sense to. And also, um, I believe one of the signs actually has a curve, and it's the wrong way. If you're going horse milk towards Meridian, mm -hmm. and you're across the bridge, there's a sign that the bike path goes up slightly to the right, and the curve makes it look like it's going up to the left of the oh. road, so the sign's actually wrong to start with. 
And I don't know if any of or most of those signs that announce a curve on that bike path, that the curves are so subtle. I don't know if you need signage to announce mm -hmm. them either. I just, in my opinion, they're not roads, and I agree. So mm -hmm. I don't know if we let's, could let's go and those. make arrangements to see what we can pluck. Yeah, I, I think it's. I would like to post a, uh, a map of the entire system on a post somewhere there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if a post is there, I would love to post a map. You know, because. We, we all know it well because we live here, but there are people that don't know the, the extent of our bike path. Right. No, I, I think that there should be some, something like that somewhere mm -hmm. along the path. Um, but, uh, like, there's, like, I think there's, I counted four or five things that say a path ends at Park right. Lane. Well, first of all, if you don't live here, you don't know what Park Lane is. I agree. And second of all, if you do live here, you after you've ridden it once, you're going to know that. Yes. And so I don't know if all of that is needed as well. It does distract a lot. Road ends at River. <laughs> you're going down thoroughfare and coming up to horse mill too the signage is just incredible mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like wow I don't know why it was all put up to frankly I, I never paid much liability attention issues. to the signage yeah. it looked like a billboard when you drive in the field <laughs> I've used it several times I didn't even notice the signs <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. that's good <laughs> the blend, they, that's good. Yeah. to me it was just I've, I've heard personal I ride urban areas so I see a lot of signs that was my <laughs> initial reaction to them too that yeah. wow there's a lot of signs here yeah in general, yeah, I agree that we should be limiting the number of signs. And More is not better. If you design the facility right, you know, right design invites right use. So, you know, as long as we're doing it right to begin with, there's not a need for all this excess signs. This is some people call them sign farms because you know, they're just, <laughs> yeah. you just going to grow in. Yeah. That's you know, great. Like you got a crop. And more up. grow up later, right? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, you talk about you know, <laughs> the path ending at Park Lane. That's one of my bigger issues because... When we originally looked at that, we were supposed to have a uh, a crossing of horse mill, you know, at Park Lane, which would and you know basically provide a landing for the path over on the south side, so that way you could connect into the church right. property. That didn't you know come through, but unfortunately they just you know, I think the county decided that they're just gonna you know, cul de sac the the path right there before getting to Park Lane, and while I understand that. Practically, no one's going to do that. I think most people are going to, you know, basically ride over the grass and either you know go into Park Lane or they're going to go into Horse Mill. So I think we need to look at you know, addressing that specific, you know, that actual travel movement. Either putting in some you know, chips, you know, wood chips, or uh, possibly you know putting in that, you know, examining more about putting that crossing in at a future date. So that way we just. Oh, you know, as far as um, you know, paths concerned, ending right before a road, I mean, it's a big no-no and it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, well, and I think in the short term, at the very least, we can get wood chips in there in the spring so that they wouldn't uh, screw up uh, the, you know, the, the, the transition between the road and the, the path. GOS is getting wood chips again this year for their nature trail. So maybe we can try to get that. Do, in there. do two together. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to end at the road that's been crossing, has been thrifted. I'm, because I've seen the drawing that showed a crossing. Yeah, uh, you know, originally we wanted those crossings, and we wanted two of them there. Yeah. You know, one on you know, one crossing across Park the road. Lane, yeah. Yeah. and another one crossing Horse Mill. Yeah. So that way, you know, the one crossing Park Lane, it basically was yeah. for the um, the travel movement if you're going to be heading on to East River. Yeah. Or, uh, and the other one was if you wanted to go down uh, Park Lane and actually you know, eventually connect into the sidewalk and path that we have and connect into the school. Is the system. county not letting us connect to the road all the way up to the road? Did they tell us that we couldn't do that? Well, I know that there was drainage issues. Um, it was the yeah. way is the reason we couldn't cross okay. Park Lane. They would wow. end up in somebody's property. And generally, uh, best practice as far as ADA is concerned is if you're putting you know, a path or a sidewalk or anything, mm -hmm. if you're putting somebody into the road, you got to take them out of the road too. So you can't have you know ah you know, you can't have the uh, the apron going down on one side and not have the uh, apron coming up on the other side. So you know, it's, it's going to be a creative issue, but at the very least, if we're putting in those wood chips there, we're we're solving a problem about erosion and we're giving the you know people that are thinking you know with common sense that they can yeah. continue to travel. Uh -huh. I, I think if we put down some wood chips or some something there to, to start with and then we reevaluate it maybe in the fall to see how much abuse and use that took and, and come back sure. and revisit if that mm -hmm. needs to be. You can you can justify um, it as a maintenance adjustment at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. um, Good idea. 
Okay, um, change the subject, but we're talking about thang. Who provided the thang? The one county? Or our budget? No, we did. We provided a amount of budget to build it. Mm -hmm. well, Wayne County, you know, is, I believe, are responsible for signs that are on the road, but we're responsible for signs that are on the path. Okay. Um, okay. Excuse me. If we decide to take it down, too many thang, we start to right right away and wait yeah. no we no no on. individual action folks let's get this done the right yeah. way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no i think i think okay. it was a couple things i think one is a lesson learned about signage that we need to be paying attention to for the next time we have a new section that we put mm -hmm. in and and i agree with you we, we do take signage down or we we do ask to have signage down that we look to reuse that somewhere else in the future possibly We'll go to we'll go to Reigns and point out that we think that they were superfluous, <laughs> <laughs> and then then we'll get a, a clearance to take down the ones that we think should be taken down. Mm -hmm. um, a one, lot. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say along those same lines. I feel like, and we've been talking about this from the beginning. We have way too many stop signs and other signs along the path, not just the new section. Yeah, you know, my sidewalk doesn't have any stop signs on it. I, I can't figure <laughs> that out. I would walk right out to the road without any protection. Yeah, so I, I, so I sometimes I signs are... Are they following, like, some ASHTO guidelines for these but, things? But yes and no. No. Uh, <laughs> That's a good answer. Uh, what a yeah. politician. <laughs> yes to say no. the least, uh, you know, that, you know, with design, you know, that you're not... Every, it's hard to get everything right all the time, mm -hmm. um, but I'd say that you know, and it's it's a newer thing to be de developing paths to begin with, especially in this area. So people may not be familiar with all the nuances and best practices. But I'd say that they're trying to follow Ashto uh, guidelines, but in some cases they might fall short. So Ashto probably says even more signs than we have now. No, not necessarily. No, so yeah. Ash, the Ashto actually has you know, a big portion about side paths and you know about the sign regulation on when you should be using a stop sign versus a yield mm -hmm. or nothing at all. Um, and it's basically you know in the context of the roadway that you're actually paralleling. Um, so if you've got you know a main path that's along a main road and that main path is crossing a side street. Well, you'd think that the main path probably has a little bit more right away than that side street. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of context-sensitive you know, design issues there. And uh, I'll feel free to share you a copy of the, uh, the Ashton like, Guidelines. Like reading. Yeah. <laughs> it's only 658 pages. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, based on that, I just wanted to say, as far as signs, I really want to make sure that we take down those stop signs at Macomb as well as at Grosio Parkway because we have traffic signals there. So it's actually, you know, redundant and it's you know it sends a mixed message. You know, should you oh, be yeah. stopping when there's you know you have a a, a, a crossing signal? Hmm. Um, you know, so I think that those stop signs should go away for sure. But the the other major issue I think is we should be installing more high visibility crosswalk markings. So, you know, especially the, the crossing that's just north of Horse Mill, where it's, you know, it's very dark, mm -hmm. you don't have, you know, you, there's not a road that you're crossing at that moment. You're not, you don't see that uh, crosswalk until you're up on it. And as we just mentioned before, half the time people aren't looking at the signs that are on the, on the side of the road. So more signage isn't going to do it, but I believe high visibility crosswalk markings will work. And for those of you at home that you're know, wondering what a high visibility crosswalk marking is, look on Macomb Street. Um, you know, just uh, just east of the Kroger area, basically right across from the post office. And last year they installed some high visibility crosswalk markings there. And you can see the crosswalk for you know, at least, you know, probably a quarter mile away, if not more. So it, it's a very good safety measure, especially at nights so that way. You know, uh, uh, motor vehicle drivers will be expecting pedestrians as well as pedestrians will be a little bit more safe. Are you planning on putting any on East River and Grow? Um, crosswalk markings? Yeah. East River and Grow. Just um, down the street. Um, does the path go? I'm trying to remember. No, but it would be nice to have that. That's her, yeah. I, I think that we should, whenever, wherever there is a, you know, a crossing, we should be examining the need for the high visibility crosswalk markings. Um, in some cases, they might not be needed, but in other cases, you know, based on site distance issues and everything, we should definitely be applying them. So, case by case basis. Okay.
If I may, um, I want to go back to Wally's question about what we want to see done. Um, and this is a question about the maintenance, the patch right by the gas station. That's one of the unfinished things that needs okay, to be done in the be, spring. It will not be forgotten. Okay, thank you. And it's on the list. Okay, yeah. Thank you. And did we get a copy of that list? I'm sorry if I... I thought you did. You, I very well could have, and it got buried in my email. Would you mind sending It's just a half a dozen things from the township's uh, mm -hmm. engineer, and I forget what it was, but that cross would... Is, is there a thing? Is it too late to add anything to that? It never is. Okay. Right, I would think if it's that important, we would just uh, examine it for new business and then even consider maintenance funding to get it done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're going we're to get that done because we were virtually guaranteed it was going to be done. And then they ran out of weather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Do we have any more uh, discussion about the existing horse mill path or the maintenance projects? We have some guests here oh. that weren't here earlier. Can we back up to sure. the public? Thank you. Con? I think I mentioned this once before. Um, DPS purchased many years ago a bobcat, mm -hmm. and they bought a, a broom for the bobcat for cleaning the bike pass, and that's been the primary cleaning device for the pass. Uh, brooms get worn out, and because we use 99% of the broom, I think we, we ought to load allow them to get pricing to replace that room and pay for it out of our bike path maintenance budget. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. And we use that for snow or just for the... the we use it all year. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you have a real muddy situation or a, a gravel situation or, you know, dirt gets on the road, you can use it out there, but most of the time it's for snow. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know on my end of the, the path I often see uh, a full-size pickup truck with a, uh, a plow on the front, actually plowing the path. So I just didn't know if that... Where at? Um, you're basically north of Ferry, between four... Township truck? Um, you know, I'm Some not sure. Some kind of truck. Uh, I'm on my way to work. Yeah, I just assumed it was township. I'm driving trucks on the, yeah. on the bike path. Sure. So but that's important for me to know that. Okay. Well, I think that is something to follow up on then. And I was going to kind of lead into something else I was going to talk about that uh, we've seen utility uh, vehicles on the path, especially around uh, Ferry, I believe it was. So oh, had to it. I had to advise them. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I'm constantly calling uh, Al over here and say, hey, I saw another one. And he's like, oh, good job over there. But you know, there, there's so many eyes like, out, out, either on the path or driving by, past. So I just want to let everyone know that, um, well, actually, I'll let, Al, you, you can say it, but you know, mm -hmm. I think you were saying that just to call the, the police station. That's all it know. takes. I mean, yeah. we'll you know, the advisor. folks down in uh, Rockwood have bike paths, and they've driven poles into the center of the bike path so that vehicles can yeah. drive down. They they, I don't think they have the ability to enforce it like we do, though. No. Um, I I'd much know. rather just enforce it instead of having a pole because eventually somebody's going to make contact with it. Yeah, on a bike. Yeah. I would just like we to watch had that. Probably him. <laughs> 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 we had that Bob of the Moody Elementary School, that new bike path. Mm -hmm. there, there's a pole there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. At any rate, we can, we yeah. can fix it. Up. But it up I'd, like to, I'd like to get the, the, the brush replaced because I want to keep that path clean. Mm -hmm. uh, they've done it. So, it's an interesting comment in the newspaper that our bike paths are clean, but our roads were not. You know, mm -hmm. so. and the, and the difference was is because the township had a maintenance fund for bike paths, and that's part of its maintenance. But the township didn't have a maintenance fund for record snowfalls. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, you know, it also helps out with public safety, from what I've been told, that you know, by clearing the path, you're actually clearing spots for the, uh, the, the fire hydrants. So that way, public safety has access to them in case of an emergency. Many, you, know, you work downtown, Rob. You work downtown. I work downtown. How many times you see people walking in the streets of Detroit in high traffic mm -hmm. because the sidewalks aren't clean? Well, we got a bike path. They won't, they won't be in the street. Mm -hmm. So, Wally, what do you need from us uh, as far as moving forward with uh, the purchase of the brush? Do you need a uh, formal action? Well, just give me your uh, uh, vote to. 
allow bids to be taken for a replacement brush for the bud bath. Okay, I think getting the bids is is a fair statement. You feel that the, the, the brush is the best thing. option? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that brush the best option for that function? Yeah, the, okay. uh, the use of blades tears up the grass on both sides. Mm -hmm. So, I think getting the quote is fine. So, I believe we paid for the initial bobcat, if I'm not mistaken, from the uh, bike path. Yep. So I have a motion here to vote to allow DPS to get bids for a new brush on the bobcat. Mm -hmm. um, so Jane supports. I support. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Seven zero. Great. Thanks. So before moving into new business, as I mentioned before, that uh, we were going to delay open public comment if anyone else came in. So we have two individuals that have uh, joined us. We're very happy to see you. Please introduce yourselves. Um, well, I am uh, Wayne Saka, and I am a Boy Scout of our Boy Scout troop, 1261 on this island. And currently I am doing the assistant in the community mayor badge. And, yeah. I'm his mother, Karen Saka, and I'm here to support him. Okay. He has to attend a public function, yeah. and that's why he's here tonight. And he has yeah. We're happy he came to this one. And he chose this one. Yeah. <laughs> we are honored. That's the best commission. Yes. Trust us. That's his favorite one. <laughs> what, what have you seen so far that, that interested you? Um, well, uh, on the bike path, what <coughs> I saw on this new bike path for next to uh, Murray School, there is uh, some big yellow poles there, and um, well, that there if people act, people can actually run into them and get re really hurt, and um, yeah, I almost ran into one of them. Um, but I would like to see some more bike paths on East River to to grow because that would be nice because we uh, many families I know like to go biking and they really would like to if mm -hmm. there's bike paths there. Yeah, from Hickory all the way to Grow there's mm -hmm. none and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. of course the road is a little wider there but yeah. it's kind of nice but. I'm just yeah. a, nice observations. Yeah. yeah. We, got, we got ourselves a potential candidate here. Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> There's no age limit on that yet. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice to have youngsters mm -hmm. input. So. Yeah. You, you point out something you know, that actually does happen quite often as far as collisions with uh, bollards, you know, the, the, the poles that are sticking yeah. up out of the ground. And you, you, they're usually put there in order to make sure that motor vehicles yeah. don't travel on the path, but they do have their uh, downsides as well. Yeah. One, one thing that I'm in favor of, which I'd like to investigate more moving forward, is instead of putting those bollards up, is to actually boulevard, or you know, put in a median in the path, like where you do have these crossings that you're worried about, because then you have two separate paths that encourage people to be traveling the right way along the path, uh, you're traveling like a, a motor vehicle at that point. It looks nicer. Um, because you now you've got a median that's got grass. You could plant flowers in there as well as you know, potentially put in some uh, vertical elements like small trees, uh, as well as it does still discourage you know, motor vehicles from traveling on the path. I've got some pictures of that from elsewhere across the the U.S. and um, you know, if it makes sense. You know, I'd like to pursue that. So thank you very much about that comment. And. Uh, we will definitely note your comment about uh, a path on East River uh, from uh, Grow down to Hickory. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. And what we're doing is we're collecting all these comments and we're going to make sure that we, this is an ongoing database that we can refer to moving forward as we're trying to build a, a, a long term plan for how to you know, provide paths as well as bike lanes or shoulders or sidewalks or other bicycle and pedestrian facilities moving forward. Um, so we can't promise anything soon, but you know we're definitely going to use this as part of public input and part of our decision making process. Thank you. 
We, until, if we had our way, we'd do a bike path out there around the island starting yeah. tomorrow. And tell all your yeah. friends to send letters. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. Tell all your friends to send letters. Yes. And Wayne, also, we may have a project that scouts can get involved with, and we'll let you guys know on that if you're looking for projects. Oh, yeah. yeah. Community no, service looking. projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll let you know, Wayne. That's good. Thank Can't you. get out of it now. <laughs> <laughs> As I see you help. Good night. Great. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll go now into new business. And we've talked a little bit in the past about getting some shirts for about the commission. These shirts can be used you know, to identify ourselves as part of the commission for uh, events. For example, if we're selling bricks over at Island Fest or up at Kroger, that we could be wearing these, as well as if we're doing any form of you know, other program, if we're leading up an actual uh, you know, bike run event or something of that nature. And I know we've talked a little bit about a couple different options, and I just want to open it up so that way people can uh, voice their opinion on what the way we should be moving on these shirts, and maybe we can uh, start to agree on some action items for moving forward with that. Mm -hmm. So, um, Aaron, I know in the past you had uh, looked into uh, a pot potential uh, quote from Under Armour. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you care to talk a little bit more about that? Uh, actually, based on all the emails, it seemed like, like the group would like to lean in a different direction. And I, okay. I don't have an opinion one way or the other on that. I just, I had a contact. And um, why were, why was it that we wanted to lean in a different direction? Was um, it um, the cost? Was it the material? The style. It seemed, it seemed mostly style, and I think cost was another factor. We did, a, we did a little bit of follow-up. We talked to some local companies. Um, one was Embroidery Me and Wyandotte, and uh, the Media Connection here, which is out in, I believe, Brighton. Um, both business owners live here on the island, and they're real friendly towards um, helping us out. Embroidery Me impress me the most. Um, we do use them for a couple other um, groups that I'm involved with. Um, they were real good. They're they're great simply because they're so close we can get we can go there, talk to them in person, um, maybe have other things made um, and have a three to four day turnaround. The prices were very reasonable on that great selection and they're very customer friendly. What type of style shirt was it? Um, you can get a like an antimicrobial uh, polypropylene shirt uh, that we could use as an activity shirt. Um, so that's a, a t-shirt then? Well, it could be. <laughs> you know, well, you know, it would be in the fashion of a, of a polo. Okay. Um, any type of shirt you want, long sleeve, short sleeve. We could do a, you know, a fleece if we wanted it, hats. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest uh, obstacle we had at this point was just our logo, mm -hmm. developing the logo. And uh, they would, of course, um, put it in their computer and it would be available. If you walked in as an individual and said, I'd like that on my hat, they would just sew it up and you'd probably walk out with it. Mm -hmm. And that was very attractive with the Bring Me. So do you send them like a, a JPEG or PDF, you know, uh, electronic file mm -hmm. and they'll they, use they can convert they said if as long as they have the image they'll convert it to whatever system they're using whatever their computer requires that's not an issue it's just coming up with a design mm -hmm. and what was the ballpark as far as the costs um, sh a, a good quality shirt with the logo sewn on not not a heat welded on was about thirty dollars mm -hmm. you know what it's not about the logo you thought about the hats and t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Maybe go to your residence might be interested in probably buying one. Mm -hmm. Now, logo is one problem like you suggested some pictures. Mm -hmm. I don't like how you have it. Like. So maybe we can agree on something nice that the public would like to buy. I mean, I'd be more proud mm -hmm. to have something really nice to buy to go there than bike time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, that's one of the things we have to consider is just our logo. It's it's gonna yeah. it's gonna be our first impression to a lot of people, and I think yeah. it's something we really need to uh, to do a good job on. Mm -hmm. I do have a friend that is a graphic artist, and I could ask him if he wanted to come up with some possible ideas that I could share 
Does anyone else have anyone, or anyone else want to try, try uh, their crack at a potential logo? Well, before you continue, can I have your opinion on the logo that I try to do? Like I said in the email, I can change the font, I can change the thigh, the color and stuff. Mm -hmm. I can still change it, because I did make a logo for my Pakistan last year. Thank you. This is what I do. You can use the right. It's my representative of Grozil. Yeah. Yeah, and they have a footprints and dark prints in the bike. Mm -hmm. And then we can somehow can change it. I mean, it's up to you. I think this is more interesting than... This looks like a... Mm -hmm. I don't know. This it's is back to our signage issue. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only one I kind but of need... Uh, I just took five minutes out and just came up with some more simple designs because that's what I did yeah, here. Yeah, simple. Mm -hmm. and I, I do agree that I think it should be simple. I think it should just... I'm hoping that it would be, you know, the, the name of our commission and then maybe, you know, one little logo, you know, one little actual graphic as opposed to, you know, a lot of stuff. But while I, I think that, Jane, your, uh, your graphic, you know, depicts a lot. I mean, it's nice that it's got the trails, it's nice that it's got the water and shows our island. I think it's a bit much, especially if it's going to be a small little icon that's going to be up. Ten feet away. Yeah. Can you read it? Ten feet and away. Sure. And that, that size. That's kind of the guideline, I think. Yeah. yeah. So if, if, if we can find something that's just very simple that fits above you know, where generally you have a you know a breast pocket on a on a shirt or a polo, I think that's kind of the way to go. Yeah, I like I like Jane's design. I think we can utilize that still for a lot of our signage for like um, you know, bigger mm -hmm. signs and stuff. Mm -hmm. For when we're doing things mm -hmm. like uh, yeah. you know the. Display sign. Display signs, yeah. And, but I think the logo signs, why don't we have your friend take a crack at it? We have nothing to lose there, right? Mm -hmm. We could also go to the graphics uh, teacher at the high school and ask the kids to come up with a design. This might be a better idea. Let the kid design it and then maybe have a public vote. Uh, sure. I, I actually am a, in a graphic design and I have Middle school. There you go. There you go. Good job, so, uh, Wayne. Design, uh, yeah. And uh, we're actually getting taught right now logo, how to make logos with different layers. <laughs> uh, well, there you yeah. go. Uh, yeah. I think he's a plant. So, yeah. <laughs> what, what I would do. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I could take a, I take could a crack probably, at Yeah, take a crack at it. All right. Great. Do, you well, have, well, do you have a t shirt business too? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, what I'd like, yeah, yeah, to, is I'd like to get a design brought back here or several designs brought back here for next month's meeting make the decision next month mm -hmm. to get moving because we'd want to get the shirts out before you know Memorial Day and all these other things that are coming with we're going to be out with the, in the public view mm -hmm. do, you, um, do you have like a size like the maximum size you want for the logo oh be like a Something that's going to go on a shirt about that right. big, I'd say. Yeah. It, it yeah. can be visible 10 like feet away. Like two inch by two inch? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a standard size that most logos are yeah. approximate. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. What are they? What are our logos in, in the nights? Is it a three inch logo? Three inch. Three inch? Mm -hmm. okay. so, so if we could make that decision in mid-March, we could mm -hmm. vote on it, then we could price out to a couple places, get that done in April, we'd have the shirts back in May. For wearing no, in the summer, a, or there's only about a four or five day turnaround. It's very fast, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that way we'd have it for Island Fest and everything else. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm actually going to be biking in the Zuda Mac, and I would like to have some things to be able to take up there to share with folks because there's four thousand bike enthusiasts plus at oh, that Detroit? event. Oh, Detroit? No. When is that? It is the third weekend in May, and I would love to be able to promote oh. Grosio and their biking at that opportunity. We can display some pictures at the festival, too. So. Well, yeah. I know that Wayne, why don't I make an appointment to see your teacher? Who is that teacher? Um, Mrs. Munzenberger. Okay. Maybe yeah. I'll stop in Thursday and see her. Yeah. She, uh, she, she's also pretty good at y using, using uh, graphic design programs. Okay. Uh, one is called GIMP, and uh, it just you know makes different designs that you can do layers. You can add a picture in it. You could probably take like an animal and stick a person's face on it, 
which is a, a, like a joke, but there's also, uh, okay. also other things that you can do. Thanks, Wayne. I'll come in and speak with her. Maybe you guys might have a project to do. Yeah. Thank you very much for speaking up on that. Yeah, you're welcome. Maybe you can put on your bike and walk, go through there. Opportunity to go through there and have a contact and that by March 10th. Right. Yeah. And then we can maybe nail down to three final love. We gotta hurry though. Yeah, it's gonna be time I, don't, I, don't, I don't think the, the we have time for that. The, the end of March, they have a cystic fibrosis run on the island, and it'd be nice to be able to have some things out yeah. and some signage. Mm -hmm. and okay. Start to have our logos in place and, and available by that put time. It, put yeah. it on fast track. Go see the yeah. go see the teacher. And let's, let's see yeah. what yeah. they can Give do. Give them two weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. nice to have it homegrown. Okay. Yeah. And Molly, I know that you said that you yeah. had a source for shirts as well. So. Yeah, there's a there's another source, and uh, I've spoken to him, and he's interested in speaking to you, mm -hmm. uh, you being the group. Uh, you know where the uh, the ice cream stand on Fort Street is, the uh, frozen custard stand. Bob Jones. Bob Jones. Bob Jones. Bob Jones. Right next to Print Man USA. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, he can put out a not an Under Armour, but a competitive mm -hmm. shirt, mm -hmm. and he said a well, shirt with a logo. And it would be an embroidered logo. He's talking about twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's certainly conversation doesn't hurt anything. I didn't no. do anything other than got the information. His, His name is Alex Kennedy, and he has a company called Printman USA. I think I've got his information. It's easy to get this stuff put on virtually anything. It's just the logo is the sure. hard part. Yeah, <laughs> that's the hurdle we got to get over. And the style, are you, are you talking about maybe just the polo style? I think um, for women? in a store like that, we can go yeah, down. there and get any type of shirt you want done. You if you want a fleece jacket, they'll do the fleece jacket or a hat. Oh, okay. So yeah. basically, we can get whatever you want as long as you have the thin logo. Right. In a dress if you want. Sure. If it goes out, push the button shirt. on the back. Okay. Yeah, I would think that we would all want one type of shirt to be our standard logo yes. for whatever. Yeah. But then you could have additional stuff. In a bright yeah, color yeah. so we can use it for biking or walking or events. Yeah. Well, multicolor. Rainbow. <laughs> we limit to like two usually. Yeah, thank yeah. you for your time. Bye, Wayne. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Wayne. Thank, thank, thank you, Corinne. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mr. Nice Sutton. I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. All right, have a nice evening. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. The reality of paying for the shirts is if we can make a convincing argument that this is advertisement for the bike path sale of the plaque uh, of the bricks, it's a little bit easier to sell. But if you're going to go in there and want an $800 suit, uh, it isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, either look for, for a frugal design that gets the job done, or be willing to pay part of the cost of the shirt is, is I guess, what yeah. I'm telling you. I anticipated paying for all of it. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I would, yeah. It's too. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's $10 yeah. dollars yeah. difference. I prefer it's to have something that, if I'm going to be sweating in, that uh, yeah. I might be, feel a little more comfortable. And I thought we could publicly announce we're buying our own shirts. So I don't have to worry about. <gasps> yeah. Well, that's, and it was a concern. Yes. I don't want to pay. I don't want to get any bad press for this committee. Mm -hmm. so. And Jane, you talked about you know, shirts that other people might want to buy. Uh, one thing we might entertain is actual you know, jerseys or something else that you might be able to have a nice big you know emblem mm -hmm. that has you know the uh, the outline of Grozeal and you know, has some more of the, mm -hmm. the indications of the trails and different things and amenities. And that's something that you know. The graphics are big. You got the billboard on the back of the, you know the, the jersey itself, mm -hmm. as well as you have nice bright colors because the mm -hmm. the object of that is to be seen on the road. Um, so that might be an option moving forward that we can entertain. Maybe like a bike shirt and put it in the back. Yeah, exactly. You can tweak it and make it better. I like. It. So, I like it too. <laughs> um, is there any other comments about the, the shirts? Great. Our next item on new business is Bike to School Day. And Erin, I'd like you to take the lead on this. Um, so that is May 7th, um, and they are already starting registration. Um, and by it, it's free, but by registering the schools, uh, you get access to a lot of free resources. And it's also, there's a website, and so anybody on the island can go and look and find out details about our particular walk to school days. 
is that something we want to do? Um, do we want to sign up on the website? Should we go through the schools first? And it says on the website you don't have to be part of the school. You could be a parent, you could be someone in the community and register your schools. But I, there was a little bit of pushback about the walk to school day. So I want to mm -hmm. well, tip, tiptoe around here. Work. You know, we're working with Michigan Fitness Foundation on the PAC thing, so I think that, is that who is sponsoring this and pushing the, the... I don't think so. I think it's called, uh, what is the organization like? Uh, the, the website's like Michigan Walk, Safe Bike Routes to School. To school. Yeah. Oh, it's, mm -hmm. that's right. It's through Safe Routes. It's a bad one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as we mentioned before, you know, the Safe Routes to School is uh, you know, a large program which some of it involved putting a new infrastructure like when you we did get a safe routes to school grant in the past that put in the, the sidewalks on uh, Berkshire and Burning Bush as well as uh, you know, a few other spots on the island uh, but a, a lot of it is, you know, it's about getting kids to be walking to school or biking to school and so you know a, a lot of it actually has to do with education or encouragement activities and I think that's at least in my mind where I wanted to kind of you know, take the Safe Routes of School program, at least for Roseal. And you know, based on that, you know, we're, we're still looking for you know, interested parties that might be want to be a part of the Safe Routes of School program because it's going to take a lot more people than just the individuals on this commission here. So you know, we'd like to get involved, other people that have school-aged children, and get involved, the, uh, the school district as well. Um, so I think we, we should get, I don't think it hurts to at least apply mm -hmm. and then make contact with the school and say, you know, we are interested in doing this. We reached out, reached out to you in the past as far as walk to school day in October. Um, we, we, you expressed interest in you know, learning more about uh, bike to school day in June. So you know, here we are, you know, let's, let's get together and start talking about this. The, and I, I think we have a lot of support from the parents. I mean, you heard Rebecca come last month um, she was very very enthusiastic very supportive of walking and biking to school and making it easier and maybe uh, that's another place we need to start because I kind of started from the top you know I talked to the superintendent and the principals and this and that and maybe it needs to be more um, from the parents and supporting and then come coming to say this is something we want to do because mm -hmm. I, I, I think the schools are probably nervous and rightfully so because there was a lot of backlash from safe routes, but this is more. There's there's seven E's in the safe routes program, and you know engineering. I think was the where the conflict was, but this is more about education, encouragement, like Brian was saying, and I I don't think there's any harm in that. Mm -hmm. Would there be any uh, need tests or what are those <laughs> things going on that day? Yeah, the conflicting schedule. We will, we will we'll make sure that there's not. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably suggest they'll partner with PAT before we do it on our own, given the, you at least not have to have that com some comfortable conversation to explain it, because they get, mm -hmm. historically there's been, I'm going to choose my words carefully with this, because we're on the town. in opposition. I wouldn't necessarily say that, but I think that, that between the board, the school board and the township board, they, there, there needs to be a, a, a bridge, a, a bridge built even with seemingly the smallest ideas mm -hmm. that they, and I think that's probably where you're getting pushback from the building administrators because they're afraid that, that someone's going to go to a school board meeting and mm -hmm. light into them and say, and even though we have a great explanation, but it'll still be someone lighting into them in a meeting. The, mm -hmm. the principals were a tough result. The superintendent was actually great to work with. He was, he was supportive. Right. So would it hurt for a few of us to get together with the, you know, ask the PAT if we can come to the next meeting or you know a subsequent meeting, mm -hmm. hopefully sooner than, rather than later, and just present about you know what's the Safe Routes program, what we're intending to do, and ask for their involvement. So you kind of inoculate yourself if you get them involved. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to be clear, though, I can I can register 
Grove Zeal Township Schools for the it doesn't commit us to anything. Does it, it doesn't. No. It just gives us access to resources. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any chance you can have the conversation before you do that? I've just seen this stuff go go sideways before. Okay. okay. Just, uh, mm -hmm. I just want to avoid any. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're so we should start with PAT, or we should start with. Maybe reach out to like some of the board members, the PAT, and maybe have a pri ahead of the meeting, and then see, if, and then maybe that way you can at least say we did this together. Okay. If we do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just coming from past experience. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. That's the, the end of all the business that I have. If there's anything else that you guys want to talk about before we move into your reports and closing. One other subject, um, we're now eligible to sign up for a 2014 PAC program. Um, I will initiate that if you guys agree that we should move forward on that. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Carol just loves her little trophy too. She <laughs> almost carries it around. This pertains so. to what you sent me today, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 I just so. had one question. I think like the, um, the largest component of what we needed to do was the complete streets policy as well as moving forward with the non-motorized plan. And, uh, you know, the, as you mentioned, the application is open now. When's the deadline for that again? Is that December? They, they're going to, I'll know when I sign in, it'll be July 1 or July 15. As far as the, uh, the deadline? The deadline. Yeah. So I'm just asking, it, I don't see it real, it's, it doesn't seem realistic that we're going to have, you know, either of those completely drafted, let alone, you know, approved by the board by that time. So I just wonder... Does it make sense to, to apply even though we don't have you know, anything new to show? Well, we, um, I did speak to Al Reem about the uh, Complete uh, Streets program. And one of the options, um, I spoke to somebody over at the Michigan Fitness Foundation and she told me that um, a lot of the communities that, um, that accept the Complete Streets program put the stipulation in that they, they acknowledge it, um, we're applicable. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't apply to us, we just don't do it. And you, that, with that stipulation, it's quite easy to adopt it and, and, and use it because it's only where it's applicable. If we don't have an area we're going to use it, we don't use it. So it simplifies everything. Mm -hmm. I guess you know, there's a lot of gray area on what a complete streets policy is. Mm -hmm. And so you know, there's you know, communities that just pass a simple, you know, one sentence you know, statement mm -hmm. of resolution, and then there's other communities that you know have a full plan, and they have you, mm -hmm. know, you know, all these you know numbers and sub numbers and everything as far involving public health. It gets very complex, and so you know, there's and there's a lot in between there. So I guess you know with everything that we got going on, you know, is, do we want to try and like? You know, examine a potential complete streets policy within this time frame. How about we? I think it's important that we continue moving, marching up that mm -hmm. path that Alan has started for us. But I'm just thinking, as far as a timetable, I'm looking at in the next two meetings, we're going to be coming up with logos and shirt designs. Mm -hmm. We're going to be reaching out to the PTA um, on the school walk. We're also going to be planning on the brick sale and the, the patio layout foundation of the, the, the drinking fountain. That seems like a lot on our plate. So why don't we pencil this in as a discussion point for maybe the May meeting Sounds in good. our agenda. And by then we should have uh, the shirts taken care of, the walk taken care of, and the drinking fountain pretty well wrapped up at least as far as a plan. And so mm -hmm. at that point I think we would have the, the bandwidth to take on additional tasks. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. My thoughts on that, the words, if we present that um, program to them, to the township board, it's really going to be their burden to examine it and to enact it. We're not going to disseminate it. They're going to disseminate it. It's not our call to disseminate it. Okay. So it's really just presenting them and have them work on it. It's not a project we're pretty much even going to dig into. Well, and if you'd want to get together, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one and work through some of the just drafting up an agenda of how we'd want to present that and what mm -hmm. we would 
want as our goal and objective to the board, I'd be willing to work with you on that. Maybe that's what we do to bring back okay. to the larger group between now and May. Why don't I just uh, send you a, um, a copy of that Complete Streets, you can review it and then uh, get familiar with it and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. So is that all right with everybody that Alan and I take that as a little subtask and no, would it be get a key? Time? Um, this isn't down. as big a task as you might think. It's a matter of just being able to present it in writing to them and let them disseminate it and either adapt <coughs> it in full or to simplify it as, as it's applicable. If it's not, they just don't accept that or use that portion of the complete streets. And you know, we're in a very unique community. We don't follow uh, we don't follow the, the guidelines of a lot of other communities because the county maintains our roads. We don't get Chapter 51 funding. There's a lot of stipulations that we just don't fall into. So um, as applicable is our best stance on that because we may only use one of 30 things in that. We may use two things of it. So if it's not applicable, it's just not used. Right. It, it simplifies it to its most simple terms. So. Are there example policies that other communities similar to us have adopted? I mean, with our, given the fact we're a township, given the fact we have our well, infrastructure the way it is? That's just it. Um, we're, we're kind of a square peg trying to go into a round hole. Okay. So even though we say we, we acknowledge the program and accept it, doesn't mean we'll use maybe none of it, mm -hmm. simply because of the demographics we have here. We're not going to have shared bike lanes and streets and stuff like that. Yeah, and there's, there's just, uh, it really comes down to how we merge pedestrian, bike, and vehicle traffic together. Yeah. You know, and then if the county accepts it and they won't do it, then it's not applicable, mm. okay. basically. Right. Pretty simple. It sounds complicated, but it's not. Good, good. Okay, um, can I add on a little bit about the book? Sure. Okay. Is it somebody going to order it like next week? I wonder, or is it going to be on a back burner? Who is going to make that happen? I don't the think brick. we're going to order any bricks right now. We just decided what brick company to go with. Isn't that what mm -hmm. the decision was? Go with the, go with the okay. company, probably get some samples. Yeah. They'll, send you a, they'll send you a lot of the information that you need to start the program. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what we should do. In the meantime, we want to talk you to want the order number runners. Okay. Are you going to order them? Yeah, I can contact the company and get samples. Okay. And then we can maybe get a stamp for our next meeting and we can make a decision. And then we can order next month. Well, mm -hmm. there's three sizes. Do we want to get a copy of each? All three sizes? I'm sure they'd give you one of each. Okay. Okay. I wonder what color book. What color? Well, we won't know until we get a sample back. Yeah. Okay. I think this is some of the stuff that uh, the subcommittee that I was asking for can make mm -hmm. through. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then just bring okay. some stuff back to us at the next meeting. You know, like, where, where it winds up. I like the Kiss time, Method, so. guys. Let's just make sure that this is a simple project. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay, anything else before uh, reports and closing? Great. Wally, you got the floor. Gee. Uh, just two things. Uh, this is the time of the year that uh, we appoint a chairman for the committee, and uh, I think you've done a great job. And, uh, with the blessings of your group, I would like to see you reappointed as chairman for Bike Path Advisory Committee. Thank you. I appreciate that. Board That's comments. a motion. Because I didn't realize that that was due already. I thought we did yeah. that in the fall. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. For the annual easy. meeting. We didn't start in a typical it's pretty, it's pretty early. fiscal year. We started off set, so yeah. it made it look like it was a short year, the first one, and then we've had a full year since. So the, I have made that as a motion. You have to second it before you I discuss it, guys. I second. No conversation. <laughs> I guess it's pretty easy to, to call for a vote, isn't it? All mm -hmm. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The other thing is, is that an annual report is needed from you, uh, and someone will be. That's why we vote you in before we give you the bad news. <laughs> they're going to start censoring our show now. Yeah. The, uh, 
<laughs> the report has to go into Carol rather quickly. <laughs> okay. Uh, letting, her, letting her know what we got accomplished last year and what we hope to see this year. Uh, I think you wrote last year's, if I'm not mistaken. Well, he does pull it out and dust it. Pull it out and change a couple of sentences. And I ask him to double my income, too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, vote, vote for 10% increase <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> At any rate, uh, that's that's the end of my report. That's all I need, that I need to say today. Thank you. Um, since we're voted on the chair, should we be voting on the, the vice chair and secretary again? Or can we keep, nope. keep only the sentences? Only the... the uh, only your position. Okay. We did that last year. We voted for the secretary again. Yeah. You can do that all on your own. You don't have to do that in front of anybody. It's just that the chairman and commission has to be voted on and approved by the board. Anyone who serves under that level mm -hmm. can be decided upon as this group. What's our annual date for that? March, I think March 24th. I'll tell you in a second. Are they back to doing them on Saturdays, or are they still no. another board meeting night? We're doing them on Monday nights. It takes me a minute to find it. You can have that. Township board meeting. Yep. It will be on the 24th of March. And so the, the, the 10th of March, there will be a board meeting on the 24th. Let's get, let's get our stuff together for that. And I'm sorry, what was on the March 24th? March 24th is the annual meeting. Okay. But the, traditionally we appoint the chairman meeting before. Okay. And the, the way that the way that the system works is kind of crazy, but it is what it is. We have to turn in a an agenda for a meeting, like three days after we have a current meeting. So this coming Monday, we'll have a board meeting. By Thursday, we have to have a final agenda to put into the newspaper because the newspaper won't accept it. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they won't take late deadlines. If we had a daily newspaper, we wouldn't have to have agendas done so early. So mm -hmm. we, we just have to back things up because part of our requirement is to have it published in a local newspaper. Mm -hmm. And something like um, the Trenton Groziel patch or the, the, the online version of the eel camera doesn't constitute doesn't count, daily? No, doesn't count. They yeah, caught up with the times. Maybe someday in the future, but mm -hmm. not now. Yeah. <laughs> or not yet. Okay. That's it for me, guys. Well, thank you. Um, I just have two things. First of all, I want to say that uh, the Safe Routes to School program is kicking off a round of mini grants, and these mini grants are used for uh, you know, programming activities. So like walking school buses where you're, you're encouraging groups of children to walk to school, which are supervised by you know, a few parents, volunteers, bicycle trains or bike brigades, as they're sometimes called, same thing, but using bicycles instead, as well as you know, crossing guards, corner captains, as well as you know, other programs that encourage people to you know, continuously either walk or bike to school and basically they call it like a mileage program. So those are just some examples. But um, basically, they, they give out you know, a modest amount of money each year for that. Um, and the, the deadline this year is February 21st. Obviously, since we don't have an active Safe Routes to School program, I wouldn't feel comfortable applying for money right now. But if we can get this up and running, you know, there might be you know, some funds for us so that way we can you know, make ourselves even more walkable and bikeable. So just something to think about, as well as um, Wally had uh, forwarded on an email uh, from uh, Trustee Smith who uh, was talking about the uh, disaster bicycle rental program, which WINDOT is actually getting ready to, uh, to implement. This is the same program that's going on in the city of Detroit under uh, Quicken Loans right now. So uh, in all of uh, 
Bedrock Properties, which is the real estate division of the Quicken Loans Company. Um, they've put in these uh, bicycle sharing uh, stations. So anybody that's a, a part of the Quicken family can use these for free and they can actually you know, travel between buildings and it basically just shortens up your commute. So that way, instead of taking 20 minutes to get across downtown, it only takes you five minutes. So you know, there's a, a variety of different options that you can use with bicycle sharing programs and you should view it as basically a, a transit type trip. And so there's other communities out there that are looking at it. So, you know, just mentioned Wyandotte's looking at it, I believe, the city of Dearborn. Uh, and this is a, a pretty decent program that I believe has you know, cheap uh, startup costs. So I just wanted to for, you know, talk about that a little bit since um, you know, Ms. Smith had mentioned it. Uh, I've expressed you know, interest in bike sharing in the past, but I kind of also you know, had a little bit of hesitance because I didn't feel that we were ready for it, especially since that's something that has a lot of you know, upfront capital and then uh, has some you know, maintenance aspects to it. But as far as you know, a vision moving forward, it might be nice you know, to have you know, a few of these bikes parked at you know, key locations, either you know, at some of the boat clubs or the airport or downtown, or you know, even you know, maybe uh, you know, work with Winda and Trenton and some other communities on a shared uh, good evening. This is the um, uh, Grosse Hill Township Public Services Commission, the February 11th meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, I'll call the roll. Uh, Riley? Here. Kennedy? Here. Schmidtke? Present. Wilder? Here. Nelson? Present. Budney? Present. Vinaz? And Kostic. We uh, have a full board. We'll run on mostly one-way trips. Mm -hmm. We have a network of, and flow that, like from a train station to a, a, a lot of times it surrounds public transit. The problem I think we would have here is I think we would it would have to be a two-way rental kind of model, and, and those haven't done as well. The one that does that comes to mind that's been successful so far is, is Divi in Chicago, but uh, I was just hearing in the New York systems teetering on going under for for other reasons. Mm -hmm. But they're interesting. I've, they're I've, they're a fascinating model, and, and the technology keeps improving. Part of the problem is keeping the bikes maintained. So mm -hmm. they've, they've gotten to a point where they've done a lot of self instrumentation on 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 the infrastructure to make sure that they work properly. So some yeah. are better than others, but they're cool. If anybody ever travels, they should try them out. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to see another city. Yeah, D.C. has them, New York, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, I believe they have them as well. Um, and it, just like you said, you know, they're usually for one-way trips, and that's why I mentioned it. You consider it more of like a, a transit-style yeah. uh, trip rather than something that you, you rent and you take around all day. Usually the way it's set up is that you either – pay a daily pass yeah. or you know you have a, a yearly membership if you actually from the area and that allows you to check out a bike and you get a certain amount of free minutes so it might be you know 10 minutes to get across town and if you get your bike back into the corral on the other end then you don't pay anything extra but 15 if, minutes or less is free that's how Tel Aviv operates and yeah. is. if you're done under, under 15 minutes you, the bikes are basically free mm -hmm. and so that keeps them flowing around keeps them moving around and keeps the stations balanced and yeah. that's the model for it. I, I really don't have a, a real good idea of how much passenger traffic occurs out of the airport here. Mm -hmm. But in theory, so having a, a location at the airport where people could hop on a bike and run it down to our downtown for groceries or, uh, or a dinner or drinks uh, after they fly in, or for people that are down at the Water's Edge Marina, to, to mm -hmm. take a bicycle up to down, to, to have a pizza or go to Perdino's or go to Kroger's or Nate's or something like that. Uh, I would be concerned about the volume of usage and I would assume that that has something to do with the availability of the program. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot in of theory it's neat. Yeah. 
Exactly. In theory, it's great. You know, the devil's in the detail. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of different operating man, uh, models out there. Yeah. Some that you know that are subsidized. Others that you know they're looking at it as an extension of transit service, so it's yeah. coming out of your transportation dollars. Um, but yeah, you know, you have to make sure it, it's a feasible project, and so that's why you know I've heard from other people like, hey, why don't we do a bike sharing? I think that sounds awesome, but I'm, I'm still hesitant until yeah. we have a good game months. plan. Make sure that this is something you know that works and that people will use. Um, but you know, just one last thing. That, uh, Alan, I know we've talked about this before. Is you know there, there's all sorts of different models. So you know, the, uh, I believe it's we've got plenty of bicycles that we find you know uh, laying around that are basically community property at this time. So in the future we might be able to utilize some of those and make our own sort of bike sharing system, which has less upfront costs and probably less maintenance costs as well. And unique to our environment. We're not like other cities. You have to keep that in mind when you plan anything. That's that's why I was saying, well, you know, this airport thing. If we had a passenger service, it would be a different story. Yeah, and I don't think there's, in fact, last time I checked, the number of flight operations out of here is drop below 50 a day. Yeah. So it's really, that's just even so, even one man plane. So, yeah. Um, but I think our, probably the use case I think it would be for a place like this would be visitors. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm thinking someone wants to come to Grozio and run a bike, you'd have a central location where you'd get it from, and it would be a return model, so it wouldn't be a one way. would keep it simpler. A and you have to have parking nearby, so I'm thinking somewhere in the Macomb Street area where we would have a place to park them and stuff. It would be close. Too bad that up at, up at uh, the Commons there, I don't know what kind of relationship we have anymore with the owner of the property, the, the, build, the, the real estate there that mm -hmm. owns it. But if we put it there, that would be a logical place to park cars and run a bike and then explore the system. Mm -hmm. and that way you only have one infrastructure place to deal with. Because the other part, would be, even if you have a, one or two bikes, you have to have a cellular modem, you have to have a kiosk, you have to have some way of checking it in and out. I think the private sector would serve us best. We're trying to think, how do we do this publicly? And we, I don't think it would You bring a better in to do it. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, but, but I'm some, just thinking for their business case for them to make to make it worth their while. You'd mm -hmm. have to make it most appealing for them. Yeah, um, it's a great opportunity for a bike rentals bike store here. I think yeah. that I, I'm really shocked that it hasn't spurred this yet because the bike system's in place and we were just waiting on Grozio when I was a kid. We had a bike shop huh? in the uh, what's now Hoi Pan. Okay. Just, it just takes, yeah. I think, some persistence on the part of a resident or two. Look at Kathy Walker with the kayaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at what she's done over the three years. You've got to give the lady credit. She's been real sparkling for that. Mm -hmm. Look at how many kayaks are done. I here. loved it. I've gone out several times with her, and it has just been a great time. Mm -hmm. I'm going this time. All right. I'm lifted. Um, the last thing I just want to tell you guys is that uh, the week of March 24th is the North American Bicycle Week. And there is a bicycle expo mm -hmm. that's going to be happening in downtown Detroit and Cobo Hall. Basically, think of it like uh, you know the auto show for bikes. And so that's happening, I believe, March 27th through 30th. There'll be lots of different vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get more information at DetroitBikeCity.org. Uh, for my job at Semcog, I'm actually going to be there with a booth talking about our non-motorized plan and other bicycle pedestrian programs that we have and we'll be presenting uh, in uh, the presentation area. So I encourage everyone to come out and you know, look at all the, the different goods out there and see what's unique happening within the city of Detroit. I already have my tickets. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a good place to buy a bike? I, I haven't been there before, but I would assume that you know you could probably buy a bike, whole bike there, but you could also probably buy you know, specific parts that you need for your bike. Just heard on the radio today that they intend to break ground for the uh, light rail next month, mm -hmm. and they're going to say in two years it's going to be done. That city is changing. It's you know I've been down there for 13 years and it's it's a different city than what I started it's, with. Yeah, it's a playground now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's actually it's getting, getting there. A lot. You know, it's getting there. Trailer the bikes there and hey, hey, go all over. Yeah, slow roll Detroit is a fun thing to get involved in at night after work. You know, it's group ride. Everybody rides to a to a restaurant yeah. establishment, meet new people. Well, hey, Rob, we're already down there. Why don't we do you know, the, the slow roll sometime? Yeah, <laughs> I'll be right in the summer to work. You have to get a reinforced frame for me. <laughs> <laughs>
on those big fat tire bikes. Get a crusher, yeah. Some of the there you go. Man. <laughs> <laughs> the tires this wide out. Here comes Wally. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Pray he doesn't have to stop. Bike so I like that's going to be one of my end goals on this commission is get you riding a bike. <laughs> it's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> But you got to wear a fundraiser. <laughs> you got to wear a helmet. Will you yeah. give me a slurry? We're going to have six sponsors for you, the corporate sponsors, you know. Dollar per mile. All right. <laughs> I have to start disposing yeah. of some of my bikes. I have too many of them I've over the winter, so I yeah, understood. Yeah, you got the bike share system already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can we, uh, can we get a motion for adjournment? I'll oh, motion. Adjournment. Uh, Jane, second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.